I'm joined today by an esteemed guest, Mr. Patrick Crappy. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Great. Mr. Crappy will be our um, keynote speaker. Um, just to give you a brief overview of Mr. Crappy, Mr. Crappy has served as a diplomat for eight years, representing South Africa at key organizations, global organizations such as the World Trade Organization, World Intellectual Property Organization, and the United Nations Conference for Trade and Development. In addition, he served in the OECD Development Assistance Committees, where South Africa is an associate member. He then joined the presidential task team, serving as a deputy envoy in the negotiation for the establishment of the BRICS, the latter's participation and association with the G8 and the ultimate establishment of the G20. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my, it is my pleasure to welcome Welcome to the stage, Mr. Patrick Crappy, to share with us some perspectives on expanding entrepreneurial ecosystems in the SADC region. Thank uh, you. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure and I feel really honored that on behalf of the Technology Innovation Agency, I've been invited to speak on this topic. Um, I felt a little challenged when this topic was given to me to say, uh, give your thoughts on this. And what I'm going to be saying, because there's a lot of authoritative literature on this topic uh, around expanding entrepreneurship ecosystem in the region. Um, I go through the literature, I, I find there are certain things that I think I struggle with. So I will say a little bit of what that is, and please take this as my perspective. So feel free to quote me though, because uh, none of this will be a, a secret. It's a topic that being acting CEO of TIA, I worry about a lot, but more from a national perspective rather than a regional perspective at least at this point, because uh, it's uh, challenges, these are challenges that we deal with as South Africa alone as a country, in terms of how to establish and make sure that our entrepreneurship ecosystem, I think it's dynamic, it's efficient, um, and I think it serves the purpose for producing and supporting entrepreneurs who bring solutions uh, to market. So these are our big uh, preoccupations at this point. Now, you know, sitting in Tia, let me maybe start there, because uh, it's in one of the more, call it more developed innovation support entities in, in the region. Uh, do bear with me, because I will speak on this topic from the perspective of innovation, entrepreneurship, because this is what, at this point for me, matters the most. We struggle with something that's called commercialization. We support a lot of entrepreneurs coming from um, universities who produce solutions out of their research, uh, and entrepreneurs generally in the market that we typically call garage entrepreneurs. Um, most of them develop solutions, but the problem is getting those solutions to market. It's really around commercialization. And for me, that's where the problematic sits. And it's something that we need to worry about. And it's less about them developing the solution, i.e. the product process, um, but more about getting that to market. So getting it to market, it becomes the problem around the jockey, i.e. the person who is supposed to drive that solution, that product, or that process to market. And this is the person that we need to worry about as to uh, what is it that we do for them. So take this and I think convert it to a problem at the level of the region to say what happens. Now I will start with a broad, because I'm a quasi call it policy person, um, representing an organization that is an entity of state. So I will not speak the language that private sector people speak, but I'll speak a little bit of the language of, call it quasi-public sector person. 
because we tend to talk at the level of policy, and I think for me that is important. Now, we operate within the context of Southern African development community as a construct. And this was you know, put together by our heads of states many, many years ago as a mechanism to foster economic development and regional integration. And so there was a reason why that was done, and amongst which includes the well-known reason of making sure that there's market integration, but there's a bigger market uh, for this. And the question is, are we achieving those goals? How far are we from that? Um, now, for this construct to succeed, it requires a couple of things. And for me, they are, they are, they are, it, it may be that sitting where I am, I can just speak because I think they're easy, but they are what they are, and that's what we require. I think we require political leadership. We require commitment from our political leadership. But more importantly, we require stewardship. Because these are people who are supposed to point to us uh, the direction as we interact uh, to try and make sure that the objectives of SADC as a region are attained. And I think for me, the stewardship from the political um, leadership is important. So that's the one thing. But the second thing to say is, you know, in SADC, ministers meet on an annual basis to put in place policies. And one of which includes, of course, uh, you know, the SADC uh, Science, Technology and Innovation Protocol. Pick that up. And it's got specific uh, intents, policy intents. It's got specific objectives that are outlined around that. Uh, I suspect, as I speak like this, if I was to ask people to raise their hands, how many of you know the SADC Strait Protocol? Uh, what its objectives are, and so on. And very few people in this room will be able to tell me that. I know that. You know why? Because I'm a South African. You know Americans um, in the US, they don't know what South Africa is. South Africans don't know what our science, technology, innovation protocol says. Although we are the players in this system, and although we are speaking about regional integration, so I'm posing that as a challenge to every one of you today to, to look at that, right? Why? Because it's important that as we do what we do, there is no way we can proceed without rallying around those objectives that have been defined by our political leadership. It starts there. We hold them accountable for stewardship, but they have to hold us accountable for being good followers to be able to make things happen. And I'll explain why that is important. So there are a number of uh, you know, uh, programs that the SADC has put in place. Uh, we can you know, list them out. Uh, but one of the, I think, important mobilizing uh, area that we should be looking at is the SADC industrialization strategy. And I'm going to go back to the topic. It says, expanding regional entrepreneur ecosystem. If you don't connect it to a particular political objective, you are probably shooting for the woods because you are either running a parallel system to that which has been defined by society at large. And I think it's important that there's connection at that level. The, you know, SADAC has also done a couple of value chain analysis around certain sectors, you know, agro-processing, mineral processing, aquaculture, and so on and so on. And I know that we speak a lot about digital economy. And there's a lot of where the activity is happening. There's a lot of hype around that in developing countries, in poorer countries. And this sector holds great potential to leapfrog us into higher levels of activity and development. But the challenge is really to say, when we pursue the objectives of SADAC, are these going to be served in the main by you know, uh, you know, our engagement in digital innovation? or are there more fundamental industrial development challenges? And in that case, what are the kind of sectors that we should be looking at to be able to mobilize our entrepreneurs around that? When we do value chain analysis, because that's where we want them to connect, are we directing them to where the opportunities should be? Are we going to direct government resources and private sector energies 
to where we want to go. And I think there's an element of wanting to mobilize people around a common cause. So that's the essence of what I'm trying to say uh, at this point. I was asked last time, and this is my probably second point after the very first long one, to talk about just state without any measure of confusion. What are the requirements for enabling innovation broadly, either in the region or nationally? Uh, and I put my proposition as follows. There's three broad strands, and I really want you to think about this, make a note of it, because I'm going to uh, task all of us to go away and think about each one of these. The first one, uh, what are the innovation enablers that we should be worrying about? That's the, second, the first part. The second one, what are the measures that we need to put in place to promote innovation? And then the third one is, what are the measures that we need to put in place to support innovation? Three. So I'm going to speak about each one of those, what the elements I think are very quickly. On the enablers, I define enablers, and I'm venturing these definitions, right? These are framework conditions that you require to put in place for innovation to thrive. And I'm calling them framework conditions. You've got four of these that I've identified in my thesis here. It's really around getting a productive research and development system, RDI system, your university sector, your science council sector, and these are the things that we, we look at in South Africa in terms of what is it producing in terms of scientists and engineers, and of course, what is the input that supports that. The second one is your human capital, i.e. the talent, and here you're speaking about the entrepreneurs, and I want us to think about them in three ways. The first one, because unless you profile your innovators or your entrepreneurs according to categories, you are likely to give solutions that are too general. There are your grassroots innovators, grassroots innovators at the bottom of the pyramid who are disconnected from formal systems. They respond to local challenges and develop solutions for, to deal with the existential challenges right now. Uh, then you have your kind of research community, which are the scientists and engineers. They develop solutions informed by uh, research, uh, their research. But there are your garage innovators, who are really the bootstrappers, who identify a, a need, a market, and they just go for it. And so when you design programs, you have to design programs well in recognition of you know, these different categories because you're able to design your tailor-made and bespoke instruments for those. Third one is the policy environment. And I've spoken a bit about SADC policy landscape around this. I'm not going to belabor the point, but we have to lock into the policy direction that the SADC has provided uh, because it will be able to give us direction. There's the regulatory environment, and I know that in SADAC there's lots of initiatives that are being undertaken to deal with trade facilitation issues, customs border issues, uh, rules of origin, e-certification. And so there's a lot of those initiatives that are happening, but even at national level, you still require, in South Africa we've got lots of regulatory institutions. They can either be a barrier or they can be an enabler. Uh, but the difficulty, in as much as they are uh, intended to serve a very good purpose of ensuring that there's compliance with quality, with standards, with environmental requirements and health, uh, the bureaucracy that supports their attainment when you're an applicant can be a problem. And I think there's one area. It's a capability issue at the level of the institutions that run these. So those are the key things for me under the enabling environment. The promoting measures for innovation is really around there must be a market. Otherwise, uh, the region is going to struggle if we don't sort out the issue of creating a market for solutions. And the private sector really has to come on board to make sure that they are able to take on board uh, 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 young entrepreneurs with solutions onto their corporate supply chains. And they have to be able to work with those and create opportunities for that. But the public sector cannot be spared from this. Our governments need to be able to know that we've got entrepreneurs who can develop solutions to solve our service delivery challenges. 
And the question is, how do we procure those solutions? Uh, different countries are using different models. In Europe, uh, other people will know about the SBIR program used by a number of countries successful. And I think I'll just uh, leave that as a note for somebody to, to look at it. But there's also international markets. How do we create opportunities for internationalization of our entrepreneurs to find markets abroad? And then the last part for me is the, you know, creating collaborative R&D programs where innovators can come together either cross-border or within the country to be able to identify a problem within a sector and solve it together. So those are modes for promoting innovation. The last one is measures to support innovation. We speak about funding from venture capital, from public sector. We know VC is literally non-existent in the region except a little bit more developed in South Africa, we had an Article 12J as a legislation that was incentivizing this. You know, it did its bit, uh, but we haven't been able to get there yet. I think there's a lot of uh, nice venture capital companies that have come on stream to be able to pick that up. But we need to know what is their sweet spot because they have places where they want to invest. My own experience in South Africa is that they are pretty averse to uh, investing in pre-revenue um, opportunities and that's a that's a problem um, for us and that's where TIA plays a role to create a pool of opportunities from which VC can take up but again it's the role of government to de-risk the opportunities and unless you do that and I spoke about political commitment if you don't do that you, the system will fail it's as simple as that um, the reason why you have government programs they are intended to address market failure Otherwise, it persists if your government doesn't come on board to provide its own risk funding. So your early stage, pre-seed, seed stage funding to de risk solutions and make sure that entrepreneurs uh, are properly prepared. The technology transfer system, very important. You need to put uh, measures in place. At, in South Africa, we've got technology transfer offices. Uh, colleagues in the region participate in SARIMA. But one thing I've learned, and we've learned, is an analysis that we've done in TIA, the organization. I think we just discovered that we're trying to roll out the technology uh, transfer offices model for each university. It just doesn't work. Uh, it works for the richer universities with more resources, more R&D intensive universities, but universities with uh, curricula that are not strong you know, in science and engineering, there's no point putting a TTO. So you probably need to look at a model, uh, such as a university incubator, you know, that can produce entrepreneurs out of university research work that is not necessarily science, engineering, and technology. So there's opportunities for us to look at different models. Um, so I think that is important. And of course, the infrastructure is important. Uh, we have uh, the CSIR in South Africa that provides a lot of um, infrastructure support for translation, uh, development of prototypes uh, to assist entrepreneurs who have ideas with prototype development and so on. We've got technology stations in tier 18 of these. They are very good, but they're just not enough. But we need to make sure that there's collaboration between these institutions, even in the, in the, in the, in the region itself, to make sure that they work together. You'll be surprised that the 13th element I'm going to speak now about of all of these things is the entrepreneurship ecosystem. Uh, so it may sound that I went a long-winded route to get to this question, but the fundamental point is that this ecosystem, for it to work, there are all sorts of things that have to come together to make sure that we have a comprehensive response to making sure that we are succeeding in our discourse. So the entrepreneurship ecosystem is what it is, and I think the SAIS program for us has played a significant role in just making that work. Uh, you know, bringing together your incubators, your tech hubs to collaborate, exchange knowledge, uh, be equipped to competently support the innovators and entrepreneurs through exchange of information and running programs properly. And I think that's been a useful, I think, experiment for us in the last couple of years with the Finnish government uh, around this. So this is point 13 of my other points I spoke about, uh, and it falls within the support category. So I'm going to task and challenge everybody to please go away. If you took notes, do your own analysis of the state of the region in respect of this. 
And then, then we can come back next year when we meet here and take stock in terms of who found what. And I think it will be a nice discussion because it will take the discourse further. I don't want us to sit here, speak about these issues, meet next year, speak about another issue without looking back at what is it that we said was a problem this year? What is it that we've done to try and understand it in one year? Not solve it, understand it in deeper in one year. And I think the Sada Secretariat uh, would be able to help us with that. So I'm going to stop here because my program director is coming for me. Uh, but uh, please allow me to thank uh, the Swiss government through the SAIS program. I think we've had a wonderful partnership that we are having a chat about tomorrow. Um, they have really uh, supported us to develop, I think, a very strong ecosystem so far in the region, and uh, we've got nice results to report on that. Uh, we have, what, 21 pro 26 projects that we've sub regional projects we've supported. We've got 21 incubators and tech hubs that have come together to work together as partners. So I think we're getting there. The important thing and the critical success factor around that initiative was because first thing you read any of the SAIC's reports, it says SADAC regional, SADAC priorities are as follows. And it goes from there because it was informed by that. And that's why once it's connected to the policy direction of the region, that's a recipe for success. So I'll stop there. Yes, um, please do share some questions um, on the online chat and we'll be sure to make sure that we do get some responses from Mr. Kropi after this. Thank you. <laughs> I particularly liked your take on the importance of grassroots entrepreneurs um, because I think they tend to be the, the type of innovator that is particularly overlooked and I hope that um, as we walk away from Mr. Kropi's um, uh, keynote speak, our speech, we also, you know, listened carefully to the 13 conditions framework. I think he called them for innovation, which were really amazing. Okay, so we continue on on the same theme, expanding entrepreneurial ecosystems in the SADC region. Um, I will now be joined by my panel. Um, Ilari Lindy will be leading the panel, um, and he'll be joined by Buntu Majaja, Sebulon David, and Annaline Morgan, who will be joining us virtually. And they will, in their panel discussion, explore why an organization chooses to expand um, into other markets beyond its own ecosystem and the circumstances that allow an organization to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, organizers. And uh, thank you, Patrick, for giving this inspiring uh, keynote just to give us some food for thought to start this conversation. Uh, it's, uh, let me say a couple of words first on behalf of SAIS, uh, which is a Southern African Innovation Support Program. Incidentally, we have the same acronym as the SA Summit, so there are these two size, size uh, organizations in this event. But uh, indeed, the program is, uh, is a regional innovation support program, as the name says. And uh, we've been in operation now a bit over four years, and uh, with the generous support that I would like to highlight here, the support coming from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Finland, as well as then uh, four, uh, five governments from the region, namely South Africa, of course, and uh, Namibia, Botswana, Tanzania, and Zambia. And we are also very, working very closely together with the Secretariat of SADC, uh, that is based in, based in Gaborone in Botswana, and that is also one of the one of the reasons why we are having this session, because this is actually called and titled in our program as the annual Southern African Innovation Forum. And uh, this originated uh, through the discussions of the size of the program already in 2011-2012. Uh, so there is a history and there is a legacy and hopefully a positive legacy on, on regional thinking about innovation, which, which our program is, is continuing now. Uh, we are discussing really now about the opportunities for, for regional cooperation and how that type of opportunity 
could cascade down into a practical uh, innovation, so products, processes, services that are benefiting not only maybe only in the context of the local innovation ecosystem, but potentially in a wider region. Uh, in this case, of course, considering Southern Africa, but uh, nothing prevents it to go beyond and take into consideration markets outside of this particular region. Why not include also Finnish businesses there? And uh, of course, we see that uh, there are several other other governments as well who are coming together and supporting the uh, summit this year. So I think I think there's an opportunity for plenty of cooperation. So the way we're going to do this is uh, is of course kind of a sign of the times. So we will be party virtual. So Annelin Morgan will join us join us from. Uh, from online, from the digital space, and the rest of us will continue having our discussion and, and elaboration and sharing some thoughts about this here in, 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 in presence, in physical presence. And we will be then closing session by kind remarks given by the ambassador of Finland to South Africa. But uh, let me now start first by bringing the panelists Panelist into the conversation, and uh, since Annelien, you are already online, and we've been meeting online in several occasions lately. Two weeks ago was the last one when, when you were one of the key interlocutors of uh, EU Africa uh, strategic partnership on STI. Annelien, would you be able just to say a few few words about your background, and uh, then we take. Uh, gentlemen here into the conversation as well, but just to maybe introduce yourself first. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ilari. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to SAIS, uh, uh, the um, partnership uh, that we have with SAIS, uh, which is the Innovation Support Program. Um, I'm Annalyn Morgan. I'm the Senior Program Officer for Science, Technology and Innovation uh, at the SADC Secretariat based in Khabarone, Botswana. Uh, and uh, really our role is an, uh, a regional intergovernmental organization. And uh, SADC is uh, made up of 16 countries in the region, in, this, in, 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 SADC, in SADC. And these are governments who have come together with a common vision uh, on issues of trade, on issues of industrialization, uh, on issues of science and technology, and many other issues um, that they've uh, come together to collaborate, uh, but also to facilitate what they call uh, regional integration. That's the ultimate agenda that we work towards. Uh, how do we foster regional integration? How do we foster uh, and strengthen interregional trade uh, amongst these, uh, these countries? Uh, but also how do we foster and ensure mobility, uh, not only mobility of goods, services, but also mobility of people uh, across the region. Uh, so we are excited to be part of this discussion. And uh, I would like to echo uh, the sentiments uh, from Mr. Ilari. Uh, I think Mr. Krapi gave us some good food for thought uh, in his keynote. Uh, he touched on key issues, which we will touch on uh, as as our discussion unfolds. Thank you, Mr. Ilari. Thanks, Annelien. And we will bring you your more in-depth knowledge, especially on the policy perspective of the regional integration in short. But let me turn now to the panelists. Buntu, maybe you could start by introducing yourself. Thank you, Larry, and thank you, Cis. Uh, good, good afternoon to everyone joining. Um, uh, I am Buntu Majaj, and I am director here at the, uh, at the S Innovation Summit um, and uh, really looking after our online ecosystems as well as online accelerator. So um, how do we do what we've been doing, networking and connecting um, uh, at an accelerated pace and by leveraging digital technology um, uh, is, is really uh, around the innovation programs, um, including the Tech Tribe Accelerator um, that I'm uh, looking after, and uh, and I call myself a um, a warrior against inequality. 
I think there's a lot of work for us to do on the continent in Southern Africa, um, and that's why we wake up in the morning. Thanks, Buntu. And moving on, the next gentleman in a chair. Uh, Sebulon, maybe a couple of words about your background and what you've been doing lately. Um, uh, thank, thank, thank you, um, uh, Ilari. Um, uh, and and uh, good afternoon, um, um, uh, everyone. Um, I'm Sebulon David, and um, I'm the um, founder of, 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 of Glodom. Glodom is, uh, is an education technology company um, from Namibia. And we are a size funded, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, we are running a size funded uh, pro project um, which is um, focused on building uh, um, an ecosystem to support digital transformation in, 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 in education and cutting across the, the, the SADC. And uh, uh, yes, looking forward to the, to the, to the discussion. Thanks, Sebulon. So, uh, both of the gentlemen here, they are here, of course, for the reason. And it is that uh, they are also, in their other capacity, a project managers for size-funded regional innovation projects. And uh, during those times when you've been running these endeavors, you have certainly gained at least a couple of uh, lessons to learn with the audience today about how does it go. So let me, let me start first with you, Buntu, because... You were, you were able to establish the first, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the first, uh, first pan-African digital accelerator in, with the support from SAIS. So could you tell us a little bit about what the project is about and where does it stand now when the grant has been closed and you are flying on your own? Thank you. Thank you so much, Hilary. Um, certainly a great... Um, SACE 2 being a great uh, launching pad um, to start uh, flying on our own. And, uh, you know, the Tech Tribe Accelerator was the project that, um, uh, the SACE funded project, that was an answer to the question of, um, two questions really is how do we accelerate um, acceleration itself? And then how do we do that in a way that creates innovation capacity in the region? Um, and um, uh, in, including uh, including the the partner organizations themselves being us um, uh, as well as our our partners, uh, which was a consortium um, uh, including San Bio, Nepads and Bio, Wuda Nepads and Bio, um, Impact Amplify, as well as M Hub Malawi, and uh, and 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 the project was answering these uh, back in in 2018, trying to take acceleration really online and the ecosystem online. So before, um, before Zooming was a verb, a coined verb, uh, we, uh, we were looking at how do we uh, create more access to those that have limited access in the region, especially the entrepreneurs. And over uh, 2019, uh, we then built the online platform, including um, some, uh, some tried and tested content uh, that we've been running with, uh, just grabbing the mic here, with, um, with accelerators, con I mean, with entrepreneurs continuously. And, um, and, and we essentially, uh, over 2020, then ran um, our pilot project of the Investment Readiness Program. Um, and, and since then, to date, we've ran about 1,000 entrepreneurs over, it started being 100 in 2020, uh, COVID pandemic of course accelerated. And we were fortunate to, um, uh, to, to have had, you know, a, a couple of lessons in building it before the COVID pandemic. And until then, to, to date, we've now ran about 1,000 entrepreneurs um, on the platform um, with mentorship as well as, um, uh, as well as across 24 African countries, uh, most of those being around SEDEC. And, and really we are now looking at how do we uh, become a platform for innovation um, as an ecosystem, inviting ecosystem players, hubs, um, development agencies and corporations and saying as a platform, how can we use this tool to access the entrepreneurs um, that have limited access to this kind of knowledge and the support that uh, they so much need. Uh, thanks very much, Buntu. And, and Sebulon, Edupreneurs Project, where do you stand 
now with, with this project. We are now talking more perhaps on physical ecosystems than completely digital ones, but uh, tell us what you are up to now. Right. Um, um, we, 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 where we are right now is that, uh, in fact, maybe let me, let me take a little bit of uh, steps uh, backward, is that um, uh, with the Age of Premier project is that we, 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 we have decided to, to, to create a platform that connects schools, companies and organizations in, in one place to allow um, uh, uh, companies to build business to business uh, uh, relationship and as well as um, also work on business uh, to customer uh, uh, relationship as well. But at the same time also empowering the, the entrepreneurs uh, with their capacity uh, digital and business uh, competencies uh, to allow them to run their own, own, own enterprises and, and be able to scale um, on, 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 uh, across the region. And, and on the other side also is that um, part of the, the objective of the project was that um, to, to uh, create a, um, a recommendation paper uh, that would then end, uh, allow um, organizations and companies uh, to share best practices across, across the region. So really where we are right now is where we have tested um, uh, 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 these on, on a smaller scale and now looking at expanding it and, 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 and strengthening it, uh, strengthening it in, you know, across the, the, the region and getting more stakeholders on board. Thanks, Evelyn. I, I read your policy, uh, policy perspective paper and, uh, and it is indeed, it's one of that kind of a tools that, that actually helps to bring more coherent ecosystem because we often know that, you know, politicians, they speak politics. Uh, we know that the administrators speak bureaucratics and entrepreneurs speaks entrepreneurship. And oftentimes uh, it's so that these languages don't meet each other. But luckily we have Anneli in, in, in Gaboron in Sadek who probably speaks all of these three languages. So, so let me, Anneli, take you into the conversation as well. And, uh, and if you think about now what, uh, what both these two projects have uh, achieved and embarked to do, uh, from a policy perspective, what recent developments uh, there have been within SADEC uh, to promote entrepreneurial cross-border cooperation and conditions for endeavors like this? Thank you, Hilary, and thank you to uh, the two speakers who spoke. Uh, I, I must say, indeed, exciting uh, and interesting um, initiatives that are happening in the region. Uh, and we really look forward to working very closely with uh, both, uh, both uh, programs, uh, as mentioned by the speakers. But I think, as I said, in, in uh, our role as a regional uh, economic community, uh, which is an intergovernmental organization, um, I, I'd like to state again and, and emphasize that it's, um, uh, it's owned by governments, uh, these 16 governments who own this organization. Uh, so, the, so we put in place some policy frameworks um, uh, at the governmental level, at an intergovernmental level, uh, to ensure we facilitate and foster uh, integration amongst the different nations of the, of the SADC region. Um, one notable uh, strategy that we are currently driving uh, is what we call the SADC industrialization strategy. Mr. Krapi also touched on it. Uh, and if you look at the SADC industrialization strategy, it's, it's really a very ambitious uh, strategy document. Uh, its al ultimate goal is that by 2063, uh, we want to see innovation-driven economies in the SADC region. So that's the, the long-term goal that we are working towards. But if you look at the strategy, we've put in place different uh, 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 programs and milestones, uh, but we've also identified a number of barriers uh, that will hinder this, uh, this industrial agenda. Uh, and one of those, uh, 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 some of those, uh, because there are many, some of those, one obviously, uh, which is on top of the list, is infrastructure. Uh, mm -hmm. The infrastructure barrier, uh, issues around uh, broadband, internet access, uh, and also issues around energy, sustainable energy access. Uh, and these are one of the, uh, some of the top priority uh, infrastructure areas that we are looking at. Obviously, there are others uh, in the top six, such as water, um, uh, such as transport. Uh, this is also in the top six in terms of the priority areas. So we have a dedicated program uh, that then further cascades. If you look at ICT, 
uh, where we've got the SADC Digital 2027 strategy. Uh, and as part of the SADC Digital 2027 strategy, we're looking at issues of, uh, uh, of um, um, how do we reach the gap, uh, address the gap in broadband access in the region. Uh, we've bring the regulators together, the different regulators from the region. <clears throat> we also look at different policies around data protection, uh, privacy, uh, issues of cybersecurity. Uh, so there's a host of things under the ICT program that we are currently engaged in. Actually, last week we were in a two-day workshop uh, validating a report uh, because we want to establish a center of excellence on ICT uh, in the SADC region. And, and this center of excellence will be uh, a network of centers of excellence that will be spread across, across the different countries. Uh, and we're considering that report last week during a meeting. Um, this morning, actually, uh, I was engaged in a stakeholder consultation uh, where we were looking at a report uh, where there was a, a mapping of the ARV value chain in the pharmaceutical sector. Uh, and we had business sector that was part of the discussion. And one of the things for me that stood out in the discussion was that we are tired of reports, we are tired of studies, we want assistance in terms of funding uh, to fund our programs, we want funding for manufacturing, to set up the industry. Uh, one of the goals in the SADC pharmaceutical uh, uh, in the, in the SADC, uh, uh, pharmaceutical uh, strategy was that by 2020, we would have set up two API uh, manufacturing plants. And the, and the business sector asked, where are those plants? We are now in 2021, we are still waiting for the two API plants uh, that were supposed to be funded through this uh, uh, strategy. So we, we, I think now uh, time has run out. Uh, we really need to be on the ground uh, and work very closely with the entrepreneurs, uh, business sector, and in that regard, we then set up what we now call the SADC Business Council. So we have now an apex uh, uh, business council uh, that is made up of all the business councils of the six, 16 countries. Uh, and the business council was actually the one running the workshop this morning. Uh, and they brought the private sector. So we are very happy now that we have that private sector engagement mechanism. Uh, and I would encourage our entrepreneurs uh, to get in touch with the SADC Business Council uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are headquarters, fortunately, in um, uh, uh, South, Af South Africa, uh, uh, because the secretariat is based in South Africa, um, and, um, um, and, and they are there to support uh, 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 different entrepreneurs, but also uh, allow for opportunities. We're also <clears throat> looking at issues of um, skills. I think Mr. Krapi in his speech touched about it, because we can provide uh, instruments or, or, or work with partners such as like we are working with SAIS, the SAIS program uh, through the uh, Finnish government and the five countries uh, of how do we put in place instruments to support um, the ecosystem? Um, how do we create a conducive environment uh, through instruments for capacity building, uh, through instruments of funding like we see through SAIS through the Innovation Fund, which is really providing a lot of support, uh, but how we then come to scale that up I think uh, um, Zeblon in his uh, 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 comments spoke about scalability. How do we then meet you to scale up across the region? Because if you look at the SADC region, uh, you're looking at a, 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 a market of over 300 million people. Because if you take the combined population of SADC, um, we, we're sitting at over 300 million people in the region. And that's a huge market uh, uh, access uh, or market opportunity for entrepreneurs. And if you look at that population uh, structure, it's largely made up of young people, uh, you know. So it, so it gives the huge opportunities for, for, for entrepreneurs to then uh, uh, um, expand within this uh, very uh, uh, the, uh, huge demographic profile uh, that we have in the region. Uh, yes, we, are, we need to deal with the issues of trade barriers, as Mr. Krapi uh, spoke about, and we are dealing with them uh, through the trade protocol. Uh, we've got the SADC trade protocol, and these are instruments that uh, we engage with uh, to ensure that we, 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 we address these barriers. I think also what is very important is the, uh, the issue of um, uh, other platforms that we've created. For example, if you see at the continental level, the uh, uh, continental free trade area, uh, the AFCSTA, which is currently being implemented, uh, so that our entrepreneurs should also be in touch on what's happening at the continental level to the continental free trade area, because it is now full uh, coming to full uh, implementation. Uh, and how do we link up to those uh, to those uh, opportunities and platforms? But we've also provided what we we now convene annually what we call the SADC Innovation. I mean the SADC Industrialization Week, 
Uh, and we've been partnering, for example, with SAIS to have uh, sessions. Uh, and I'm happy to announce that the, 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 the week will happen this year, uh, 22 to 27th November in Malawi. Uh, we are planning to host the SADC uh, Industrialization Week uh, in Malawi in November. Uh, and we hope to see many of you there. Uh, again, we will work with SAIS to have a session during that November uh, Industrialization Week so that we can further uh, reach out and create an opportunity for uh, uh, partnership building but also for further profiling uh, uh, what the entrepreneurs have to offer. So maybe I will stop there, uh, Ilari. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Anneli. And there, well, there's plenty of food for thought. And how do we connect it, you know, the admin and, and politics to the practical experiences on, on going regional? So, uh, uh, Buntu, maybe you can help us to understand a little bit what were your thinking initially I mean, you were coming from the Southern African ecosystem, but your your ambition was from the start to be at least regional, if not even even global. So, what were the the three elements that that made you think that you can actually go cross border? And is there is there a relevance also to enabling policies? Thanks so much, Larry. I do want to um, appreciate us, uh, the points that you mentioned, and Aline, because. Um, uh, you know, priorities such as infrastructure um, from a broadband perspective, priorities such as um, regulator uh, coherence um, uh, are, are issues that we faced uh, quite directly with our entrepreneurs. Um, this, uh, w whether this is us delivering um, the programs with the entrepreneurs or, the pro or helping the entrepreneurs get to the next level, um, you know, accessing new, accessing new markets um, across, uh, across borders um, is important for them to synchronize their regulation, um, uh, their regulation environment um, as, as, as businesses. And then, and, then, and then, of course, the entrepreneurs are um, from from varied countries and 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 I, and I also want to appreciate you know the the continued um support by says two in the sense that you know say we uh the says two countries are you know are, are in Sa southern africa and the six of them and these were uh fundamental almost as a foundation for us to 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 launch pad off a in our pilot program that we can operate and we are operating cross border um, and and with that came uh, infrastructure broadband challenges, but these are now things that we build back into the system, um, which allows us to then you know access e e even say more uh, areas that are more distant from from our local region. If we've we've got some mentors from Francophone, for example, or some entrepreneurs that have come in from Francophone, um, because we, we we've started looking at how can we um, have uh, a, a language translator um, or language translator um, API pulled from Google into the platform. And so I think um, you know as we were given a a uh, a, a problem. To an opportunity to solve a problem that we really felt passionate about, and says to um, gave uh, allowed us to uh, to to propose, um, and then gave um, the the opportunity to go out and prove a, a model that's going to work in the region that uh, we are now seeing, uh, although not easily, um, uh, you know, is is expanding across the continent. Uh, and 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 I think a key a key area as well around um, the enabling environment provided by um, the uh, you know the program such as SACE two which is which is supported by the SEDEC region countries and so on um, is uh, the connected hubs which is um, a, a a really a collective of of hubs a collective of um, of accelerators incubators across southern Africa um, that is facilitated by says two where we would come together um, occasionally share knowledge uh, share experiences um, and then also in our implementation of um, of seeking entrepreneurs in our implementation of um, of of of, of building content, uh, we would collaborate, and and I think this, I mean, this is a key element because we were able to um, to be received 
um, in the countries where Connected Hubs members are. Mm. We were received and, uh, and, and were able to tap into those ecosystems um, sharing this opportunity uh, or the investment readiness program with them, and and because of that, uh, you know, we 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 appreciated the diverse representation in our programs across Southern Africa. Um, uh, thanks to uh, thanks to the Connect Hubs, and which is you know officially now also taking flight. Uh, you'll see tomorrow in the program they uh, we are now um, you know a, um, a Southern African Innovation Collective. And I hope to see you guys there as well and now launch cocktail. But uh, this, uh, the, the, the hubs became a, 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 a pivotal point of um, also understanding the, the challenges in those regions and how do we communicate to those entrepreneurs. Uh, because across, across the different borders, um, the entrepreneurs are having some slight nuances. Um, so the mentors that we're able to pull from those areas are quite important. Um, and I think uh, thirdly, um, I would say that being a consortium, uh, one of the the, um, the key requirements uh, of of being a SACE funded program, and and uh, was that we were a consortium, meaning that uh, we are a group of um, of organisations coming from private sector and public sector uh, coming together to recognise that there is a common problem in the ecosystem. Um, and, and we want to accelerate and we want to solve this through online acceleration and virtual mentorship and building verticals of content um, that will speak to um, very precise expertise like investment readiness, like biosciences um, uh, and biotechnology. Um, and, and, and as a consortium, we, we are coming with different networks. Um, uh, for example, Awuda Net, Net, Netpad Senbayo has representatives from um, across, you know, f- 50, different, uh, 50 different countries in Africa. Ourselves have a strong base here in South Africa, the Southern, uh, S- Southern African Innovation um, Summit, but we, we do have a representation of 56 um, uh, countries um, from across the world. Uh, that that visit the summit. So 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 this really uh, you know as an ecosystem serendipity um, and and continuous um, and continuous um, I can say uh, 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 you know creative tension of, um, of 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 ideas and co- and co creation coming from different co- consortium members um, has allowed us to think broadly. Um, and think how can we access the entire continent, and and if we can, how can we access the entire world um, in in creating an ecosystem platforms for African entrepreneurs um, to, uh, to 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 become to you know to take them to the world. Um, that's a that's a very good uh, good and of course very elaborative way to put it. So uh, to cut it maybe cut it a little bit short to say that uh, you really didn't see that much of, uh, let's say, institutional barriers or, or blockage uh, that would prevent you to go beyond your home ecosystem here. Yes, yes. I, 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 would, even, I would even go to say that there was um, uh, quite a lot of um, uh, institutional support. Yeah. Um, of course, the COVID pandemic played a role as well in accelerating because naturally we are online. Um, and and were then able to really tap into that and um, and 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 from the beginning um, run everything online. Yeah, yeah. I think COVID really has changed uh, things and shifting, as you know, the much used term goes, the paradigm a little bit at least how we use digital tools. But nevertheless, uh, I think the physical presence and and get to know your partners is still important. And now I would turn maybe to you, Sebolon, if you could. Tell us a little bit about your ecosystem and what were the, let's say, the, the key players that helped your project uh, to survive and, and to achieve its objectives and, and now going forward potentially to scale. Right. Um, just, just adding on um, um, really um, to what he said is, is that the, the structure of the size two uh, uh, programs and projects is that it, it, it's that consortium angle, uh, where we were able to work uh, in our consortium with uh, one of the universities, um, uh, to be specific, the hub um, NBII, 
in, the, in, in the consortium. And we, uh, with this relationship that we have built, um, uh, we're able to uh, bring in the research and development angle and also leverage the network um, you know, um, of the connected hubs. Uh, NBII being... I don't know if everybody knows what the NBII is. Right, right. Um, NBII being the Namibia Business Institute, um, Innovation Institute at, at the University of Science and Technology in Namibia. And uh, this allowed us to really uh, build this strategic partnership and, and leverage the research and development in the network um, across the region that NBII had already have across the, um, uh, the, 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 the region with the size countries. And um, the other uh, partners are like, um, we, we worked uh, um, closely with the company in, in, in Finland, uh, which is our strategic partner called Edrix. And uh, with all these uh, different players, we are able to put um, uh, 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 the, the perspectives of the industry, the perspective of the academia, and also pulled in also uh, the government angle uh, where we, we realized that it was important, critically important, because we're working on the edutech space to bring in the Ministry of Education and also the Ministry of ICT. But then we realized also that it was very important to bring in the Ministry of Trade and Industry also uh, for sustainability of, of, of the project, even after the funding has, has, has ceased. And, and all these different players, um, had um, they, they, they are looking at the... Uh, projects uh, where they, 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 they are getting value, that each and every player should get value from, from the ecosystem. And this mm. different perspective has really allowed us to think uh, different um, and, 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 and yet at the same time pulling in the same direction. Um, so um, from our perspective, this, this is how we've, we've seen it, and we've seen that it's, it's, it, it has brought uh, a different way and in this time of even COVID way uh, things have become a little bit difficult uh, for everyone. And um, um, uh, we're able to um, uh, bring out so much value that uh, we think that uh, in the long run, uh, we are very confident that if, if, if both players, the government, the industry, and, 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 and then the private sectors are working together uh, and the academia, um, we can really go far as, as a region. That's a, that sounds very encouraging in a way that, uh, because, you know, when we launch uh, size 2, of course, one of the objectives was to introduce this the element of cross-border cooperation and, and opportunities that it, it may offer to, let's say, uh, not so traditionally well-equipped players like universities who have done, of course, collaboration across border already for quite some time. And uh, now you say that uh, uh, small businesses like yours or, or your Finnish partner, uh, they are there and, uh, and happy to collaborate in because of the consortium approach. Right, right. Um, the, the one thing that we have um, we've, we've, um, seen fr and learned from the, from the project is that we've put education at the center. Um, however, we, the ecosystem has started attracting other sectors as well, we're looking at uh, companies that are in the agriculture sector, connecting into the digital and looking at uh, how they can improve their businesses and their visibil the visibility and the marketing of, of their products. And, and also bring in companies that are involved, let's say, in manufacturing tables and, and, and chairs for the schools and so on. So it then became this uh, uh, kind of connecting uh, different uh, sectors in, into one, uh, one place and, and, and then creating value for many different players, either from the government side um, uh, or, or from the academia side or from supporting the small companies in, in scaling into other regions. Yeah. Well, this is a very interesting finding, of course, and what we see is happening also when, when we look at the innovations and when we talk about innovation systems, we increasingly see that uh, it's maybe not necessarily uh, innovation systems anymore, but it's about systemic innovations that are happening and taking place in a certain sectors, like electric car, for example. But uh, let me, before we start wrapping up, let me uh, take Annelien into the conversation as well. And, and Annelien, do you have uh, uh, any, any thoughts on the, what would be the key enabling factors to the expansion of these entrepreneurial ecosystems in, in SADC region? 
What still needs to be done to make it more, uh, let's say, uh, achievable opportunity for even a smaller and uh, less experienced players? Yeah, thank you, Ilari. I think uh, for me what's important, I mean, listening to the two gentlemen, uh, especially to uh, Buntu, uh, there's a lot happening, but it's happening uh, around, um, how can I say, uh, a regional organization that is not involved in what is happening. Uh, um, 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 so, so, so yes, as entrepreneurs, I know they're very free, uh, they are very independent, and they don't like to engage with bureaucratic uh, institutions and organizations. But at the end of the day, those bureaucratic institutions and organizations are important. Uh, they are key to unlocking your challenges that you face on the ground. Uh, and I would encourage that uh, there be more conversation with institutions such as SADC, uh, um, institutions such as the SADC Business Council, which I mentioned, um, because we are also uh, working with other uh, uh, what we call international cooperating partners, for example, such as the uh, uh, the Finnish government, as you can see, uh, funding the five member states. Uh, we've got the European Union, who funds a lot of our programs. Uh, we've got the uh, GIZ through the German government, uh, for example, who's funding currently a five-year program uh, with the European Union on uh, supporting industrial sectors, uh, two value chains, which is the ARV value chain and the leather value chain. And, and as part of that program, uh, there's a grants component of that program. So we launched the first grant last year. Uh, where we were funding uh, in, uh, entrepreneurs. We, we were looking for proposals for entrepreneurs uh, to fund, uh, for example, their prototypes, to fund innovations, uh, to fund technologies. But the sad part is that we had such a, a low uptake of that grant program. And uh, uh, the maximum value of the, for the minimum value, for example, of the grant is 300,000 US dollars. The maximum value of the grant is 500,000 US dollars that we're offering. But we only got three proposals from the entire region. Uh, so if we have more conversations and work very closely with uh, 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 your tech tribes, you're now uh, going to launch the Southern Africa Innovation Collective. How do we uh, use your platforms to share that information uh, on these opportunities? For example, we are planning to launch the second, uh, the second call for the grants. Uh, and we are going to increase the funding because we had to roll over the funding from the previous call. Uh, so we would want to work with the uh, Innovation Collective platform, would want to work with the platforms created such as uh, uh, by Zeblon, uh, Glowdom, and other platforms created by SAIS. We also publish these calls through SAIS, uh, um, um, you know. But I also want to caution that these uh, uh, networks and platforms shouldn't be a network and platforms of the elite. Uh, because we're going to continuously broadening the gap of the grassroots, uh, the grassroots um, uh, and the people at the community level. Uh, so how do you then reach out to the people in the rural areas as you are uh, organizing yourselves in these networks and platforms uh, um, now uh, going to uh, um, have the innovation collective? How are you linked to the people in the rural areas that need that support? Because if you look at the structure of many of the economies in Africa, uh, they're they are made up of informal economies, and, and that's where the, 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 the target should be. How do you tap into these informal economies uh, so that you address the needs of the informal economies and the people on the ground? Because all the countries are, are, are grappling with the same issues. It's poverty, it's unemployment, it's inequality. We, in South Africa, you call it the triple helix. You know? So all the countries are, are, are suffering from that. But I would like to really caution not to create networks and platforms of the elite where you are completely uh, 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 disconnected with the people in the informal sector, uh, where you are completely disconnected with the people at the grassroots level. Uh, and that's really the caution I want to uh, make uh, uh, in, in, in this discussion. But I say that uh, let's, let's uh, uh, engage with regional organizations such as SADC. You've got other regional economic groupings such as COMESA, You've got, uh, for West Africa, you've got uh, ECOWAS. Uh, so engage with these regional economic communities. You've got a fully functional uh, secretariat now for the African continental free trade area based in Ghana, uh, uh, Accra. Uh, the secretariat engages with different networks. The secretariat engages with different organizations. It is fully functional now, uh, secretariat, uh, and it's already kick-started its program. There's also the African Union uh, uh, in Addis Ababa. 
Uh, but for me, the best uh, uh, way to, to engage the continent is through the regional economic communities. I mean, the name alone tells you regional economic communities, because these are groupings of countries who have come together based on economic uh, 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 goals, based on uh, social goals. So it's important how do you tap into COMESA, how do you tap into ECOWAS, how do you tap into the East African community uh, through the regional economic community. So we are, we, we are there, uh, and that's why we sit on the Supervisory Board of SAIS. Uh, and our role on the Supervisory Board of SAIS is to ensure that SAIS is relevant to the region, to ensure that the programs of SAIS respond to the regional priorities. And I think we've been working very well since SAIS 1. We've been surfing on the board till SAIS 2 now. We still serve on the board, and we have, we have a very strong uh, and very good relationship that we are forging with SAIS and the member states. Thank you. Thank you, Anneline. So I think now it's time to then uh, wrap the session and uh, proceed to the, to the closing keynote. Uh, before going there, I, I just want to leave uh, Anneline also you with the thought that one of the, one of the principles of SAIS really was that, uh, that the experience is what uh, both Buntu and Sebulon had put forward here. These are, these are the experiences that are valuable also when different type of support instruments are being designed. And uh, they should be heard, they should be listened, they could be part of those mechanisms when these instruments are designed so in order to make sure that there will be demand and uh, and they can come with the different shapes and sizes, like a policy paper, what the Edupreneur project has produced. So let's continue there. We still have uh, plenty of time to do this. And in closing, Sorry, I, would also, <laughs> I would also like Sorry. to say that SAIS is bringing out an ecosystem study of these five countries in the region within the next month or so. And I'd like to say that it's not... The end, it's only a beginning, and it's a food for thought, and it's a platform, commonly used word nowadays, but which I encourage you all then to take up, go and visit our site, give us a feedback, is this true or not, what needs to be added, and take it forward with you yourselves, it's going to be public good. Thank you, Anneli. Sorry, Ilari. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, sorry, Ilari. Just one last point. I just want to, 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 to support what you, was, you said, Ilari. Uh, I think maybe what's important is that we, we don't end the conversation here during this uh, short session. I think I would like to challenge uh, you and, and the size colleagues. Uh, let's have a follow-up session where we can then unpack these issues to see what type of instruments do we need to set up at the regional level uh, to support uh, uh, these initiatives that, that have been supported through size uh, two and how they, we can take them forward. So I really would like to say, uh, let's have a follow-up conversation from this conversation uh, so that we keep uh, discussing because I, I, I'm saying this because uh, uh, two weeks ago, I was requested to, to, to draft a, a concept paper on, 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 on what programs to support because the EU wants to give us money. Uh, but, you know, I can't sit in my office and design this. It can't be a top-down approach. It has to be a bottom-up approach, you know, uh, to say what programs do we need to put in place uh, for, for, for partners to support. Thank you. So let's have a, let, let, let's uh, arrange a follow-up. Thank you, Ilari. Thank you. Open invitation for you guys. So uh, let's see what we can come up to and uh, let's take Annalena's words. Thank you, everyone, to follow up this, uh, follow this session and hopefully also follow up with us. We break here and, uh, and we proceed to the closing and back to you, uh, Master of Ceremony. Um, thank you very much to the previous panel for a great um, conversation. Um, it is yet again my pleasure to introduce yet another keynote speaker um, who will be the closing keynote speaker for the, the, the current topic. Ambassador Anne Lamilla. Um, she's newly arrived in South Africa from St. Petersburg, Russian Federation, where she worked as a consultant, con consul general of Finland, actually. 
Um, previous ambassadorial posts in Ms. Lamilla's life um, include ambassador at large for global women's issues and gender equality and ambassador to Mexico accredited to Cuba, Haiti and Central America. Um, previously, she was also the deputy of mission of the Finnish embassy in Washington and held various directorship positions in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Finland, including the Americas and Asia Department. She was also the deputy permanent delegate in the Finland Finland's permanent mission to UNESCO in Paris. Earlier in her career, Ms. Lamilla served in the Finnish embassies in Madrid and Brasilia. It is my pleasure to welcome her to stage to be our um, closing keynote speech. Okay, good uh, uh, afternoon to everybody. Um, I'm, a, I'm a bureaucrat. <laughs> Coming from Finland, <laughs> I'm the ambassador of Finland working for the Finnish government. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and especially uh, our uh, keynote speaker, uh, Patrick uh, Krappel, uh, and all the panelists, distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, innovation and uh, entrepreneurship are increasingly recognized as crucial building block blocks for sustainable economics. I, I think I put my glasses on it. <laughs> But, uh, so, uh, uh, building blocks for sustainable economic and social development all over the world. Southern Africa, of course, is uh, no exception. In this session of uh, the Innovation Summit, we have discussed the strengthening of innovation ecosystems from local to national and eventually at the global level. This goes well aligned with the overall theme of the, this conference, expanding horizons. Transregional cooperation on innovation activities is becoming increasingly important as countries in the North and South face shared challenges. There is need to promote sustainable growth and jobs, and to find new solutions to mitigate and adapt to climate change. We are urged to make a transition to carbon neutral and circular economy. And digital transformation is also needed. These are just a few examples of our common challenges. The COVID-19 pandemic, of course, has brought to the forefront the urgency of joint action. It has also shown how interconnected people all over the world are. The new European Union African strategy also entails innovation cooperation across continent. Thus the title, a partnership for sustainable and inclusive de development. So key policies uh, have been adopted to unlock the potential offered by research and innovation. Technological development and the digital economy are part of those policies. Youth entrepreneurship is critical in these endeavors. The access of young people to knowledge and skills is needed for their improved employment. Finland has just published uh, her first ever Africa strategy. It was published early this year. It aims to identify the shared interest and to diversify and deepen Finland's relations with African countries. Uh, not just development cooperation, which is always meant to be temporary, but to have a proper, deep political and economic ties. So uh, political and economic partnerships are at the core of the strategy. Innovation and technology cooperation between Finnish and African actors will be intensified. Uh, Finland aims for better utilization of digitalization 
technology and innovations for reaching the sustainable development goals. This is why my country is involved, including in uh, also leading roles in several global processes related to digital and technological development. You might know that we are co-chairing together with UNICEF and some other countries the Generation Equality Technology and Innovation uh, Working Group. So uh, Finland is also funding the UNICEF Innovation Fund to advance inclusive innovation globally. At the moment, uh, UNICEF is in the process of establishing two of its innovation hubs in Finland to develop new solutions to test and scale learning and innovative uh, financing solutions. We have talked a lot about scaling, scaling um, uh, good experiences, and, and that is really very much needed. And we are very proud, of course, that UNICEF has chosen Finland uh, as, as the place of innovation. <laughs> Uh, we also support UN innovation work within United Nations Population Fund, sustainable investments to innovation and infrastructure with United Nations Office for Project Services, UNOPS, and technology, innovation and foresight with Global Pulse Program reporting to the UN Secretary General. So, if we want to accelerate inclusive economic growth and industrial development, we need to empower young people, youth populations, to develop, acquire, upgrade and adopt new technologies. This should be done not only nationally, but on a trans-regional level. Rightly so, and I'm looking at Anneli, um, I don't know if she's still there. <laughs> uh, the Southern Africa Development Community, SADC, and its 16 member states are emph emphasizing regional cooperation in science, technology, innovation, and youth entrepreneurship in their recently updated policies. So regional cooperation is an important factor towards stronger entrepreneurial ecosystems and sustainable economic development. Linkages between uh, national ecosystems create more opportunities for ecosystem players as extended networks of potential clients, partners, support organizations and finance, pro finance providers they become much more accessible when we are together, when there are several actors in the region that look for them. So sharing knowledge and success stories across borders have also uplifting effects on national entrepreneurial cultures and skills levels. Regional cooperation tends to narrow development gaps between countries in a region. Slower moving economies are able to speed up their expansion through shared infrastructures such as digital networks. The creation of new learning and business opportunities for role players across borders is vital for success. This is how they can leverage each other's knowledge and transfer good practices. Thus, understanding what works and what does not work. International cooperation, to my mind, always brings along added value. Um, Ministry for Foreign Affairs uh, for, uh, of Finland has been partnering with South Africa and SADC in innovation system development since the early 20s. Today, one of the flagships showing our commitment to practical action is the Southern Africa Innovation Support Program, SAIS, or SAIS. <laughs> so funding comes from the Ministry for Foreign Affairs of Finland in partnership with the SADC Secretariat and the five host governments of the countries where the program operates. 
Botswana, Namibia, South Africa, Tanzania, and Zambia. SAIS is a regional program first initiated in 2011 to contribute to the design of innovation policy and to enhance uh, regional innovation cooperation in the SADC region. Building on the achievements of the first phase, the implementation of the second phase of SAIS, SAIS II, was started in June uh, 2017 with a special emphasis on youth and innovative and entrepreneurship, as well as ecosystems supporting startups. By today, the SAIS II Innovation Fund has co-financed in total 26 regional projects supporting innovation and entrepreneurship in more than 10 countries in the SADC region. These projects have engaged more than 100 innovation organizations. Uh, Ilari was telling about the cascading effect. So this cooperation has cascaded to benefit hundreds of startups through the creation of instruments such as Tech Tribe Accelerator or unique knowledge products such as the African Angel Academy training program. AAA. SAIS2 has been serving not only as a finance provider and capacity developer, but also as a knowledge base and networking tool, sharing information and connecting role players into cooperation within and beyond the SADC region. As the program is now coming to close in March 2022, I'm delighted to see that some of the achievements driven by the local champions are also presented in the program of this event, such as the launch of the Southern African Innovation Community, formerly known as SAIS Connected Hubs. Finland, of course, is committed to par par partnering with the innovation actors in Southern Africa, also beyond the SAIS II program, and we were also referring to working together in the future. So at present, we are supporting the startup ecosystems in South Africa by investing in circular economy entrepreneurs to give, together with three selected organizations, namely Fitula, Icle Africa with Launch Hub, and WOM Hub. So the focus is on supporting uh, women uh, 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 entrepreneurships and uh, women-led uh, startups. We think uh, they still need a bit more support than, <laughs> than startups uh, 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 that are run by, by men. So a new phase of this type of support is planned to be launched next year. Uh, please uh, <laughs> follow our, our pages. So we are also supporting circular economy transition regionally in Africa with the African Development Bank and through our strategic partnership with the Africa Circular Economy Alliance. Our innovation and entrepreneurship support in biosciences field continues with Sun Bio. There is also the Energy and Environment Partnership program in Southern and East Africa, and that funds innovative early stage clean and renewable energy companies. And there are quite a few projects uh, still going on in different countries uh, of Southern Africa including Lesotho, by the way, who often um, doesn't get many projects, but uh, there are five projects that have uh, actually been working in Lesotho. So, and uh, Lesotho is one of my countries, so it's dear to me, <laughs> such a, also Botswana, Mauritius, and then Sadiq, of course, and yeah. 
So innovation systems that work for digital transition are in focus in a new regional development cooperation program currently under planning. I would also like to mention the work that has been done in the academic field. Finnish universities are increasing their cooperation activities in Southern Africa. One example of this is the University of Turku campus and Future Tech Lab in Windhoek in Namibia. So we are actively working to promote a closer collaboration between the innovation organizations and innovative companies and research organizations between Finland and Southern Africa. To conclude, we see innovation and entrepreneurship crucial in achieving uh, development, uh, sustainable development goals. For us, regional and international cooperation is a real value added to expanding horizons, finding new partners and business ideas. And uh, we want to be a partner uh, and we want to uh, offer you our, our uh, cooperation. And uh, we want to see our cooperation uh, uh, in Southern Africa to strengthen even further. So thank you for your attention and uh, good luck and all the best to all of you.